Steeler Nation, we are back again for the one and only The Sick Podcast, Steeler Crazy. I'm Jay York Football. This is Miked Up Sports One. How are you today? I'm doing great, man. How about you? And uh, I'm, I'm wearing a shirt if people are watching this, the video and not listening to the podcast that is quite relevant to today's show. Angry Runs, baby. Jalen Warren, Najee Harris, and we have an angry runner joining us today jay in just a few minutes but why don't you tell people what makes the show go yeah and a proud pit man as well held a pit so that's that's the little teaser we're not going to give it away but yeah shout out to steel city wheelhouse where the bar is set tires for all cars and trucks can now be purchased online at steelcitywheelhouse.com and best of all financing is available go see our guys john and john there like I said, Jalen Warren, number 30 for your Pittsburgh Steelers, gets all his custom auto work done, best in the city. And we're going to talk to one of the best. Hell to pit, baby. Let's get to it. Turn up your volume. Because you're about to listen to The Sick Podcast. Steelers crazy. Harris Smith shields. Blacko Polamalu takes it home. Super Bowl 43. Pittsburgh might be bound for that thanks to number 43. The sickest Pittsburgh Steelers podcast. Sports entertainment like no other. It's going to be sick. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He spent some time with the Pittsburgh Steelers last year. Jordan mentioned it. Proud Pitt man. Well-traveled in the National Football League. And definitely an angry ass runner. That that is for sure, as he's laid a lot of unfortunate defenders uh, on their backs throughout the years. We're happy to welcome in to the Sick Podcast today, Quadri Allison. Quadri, what's up, man? Hey, what's up, Jordan and Mike, man? Appreciate appreciate y'all for having me on the show. Um, I just told you guys a little bit backstage that I that I've been watching um, from like Instagram from afar. So it's a yeah. pleasure to be on here and uh, get a chance to talk to y'all. Appreciate Thank having you. Me. We need to add, we need an angry run shirt for you. By the way, you you definitely had to be a candidate. At least we'll at least throw back the pit. I mean, there were some with the yeah. Falcons, I'm sure too, that we could easily find and get you a shirt made, and we'll sponsor a sick podcast or something like that. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. I've had my fair share of angry runs in my career for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I think that's fair. We well, just mentioned his name, so why not just start right with that? Tell us about. The Steelers running back room a little bit. Tell us about Jalen Warren. Jordan saying sh- a little shy off camera until we got him out of his shell. Is, is he the same dude in person? I'm sure hardworking dude, guy who kind of he is somebody who, you know, leads with his actions instead of words. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Jalen uh, is definitely not a man of many words. Um, definitely a leader by example. Um, and and that's where him and like Naj are a little different. Um, Naj is is more of a vocal guy than than Jalen is. But you know, due to their own right, they're both leaders by example. Um, but yeah, man, Jalen's awesome. Uh, he's quiet at first when you first meet him. I'm sure you guys had the same experience. And then the more and more you talk to him and you get to know him, you see this other side of him where he has this like big personality. He's funny, you know. And then and then he won't stop talking. Uh, so, you know, it was, it was real cool to be with him and, uh, and Najee in the room this year. And, you know, one person that really, like, holds that together is, like, the running backs coach, Eddie Faulkner. Um, nothing but love and respect for Coach Falk. Uh, great mentor, great coach, like, great, just great man all around. Um, so I feel like, you know, I got, I, I got the, um, you know, the ability or got a, you know, the, the chance to learn from him uh, this season. And I just know them two learning from him is, is the reason they are the dynamic duo they are. No doubt. It's fun talking about Jalen and Naj, but we're here to talk about you, man. Two-time 1,000-yard rusher at Pitt, ACC Offensive Rookie of the Year back in 2015. I always like talking to our guys around draft time trying to get a bit of an inside look at what that process is like. You obviously get drafted by the Falcons in the fifth round, but leading up to this thing, what, what is this process like? What's going through your head and how are you, you know, coping on a day-to-day basis with such a big moment in your life? If you could take it back a little bit for us. 
Um, yeah, man, it's, there's a lot going on during this process. You know, like, the you know, you finish your bowl game uh, whenever you finish your bowl game. And then, you know, you really have about two months to train for the combine. So, you know, like if your bowl games, let's just say December 26th, day after Christmas, you know, you, you go train wherever you're going to train for two months. And for me, I, I went to Florida. I went to Fort Lauderdale. I worked at an XPE with Matt Gates and those guys there. Um, but it's like, you know, it's two months of how can I get myself in the best shape um, of my life? And also, how can I get ready, you know, mentally for the biggest interview of my life? Because, yes, the combine is an interview with physical things like, you know, 40 times vertical, bench press, all of those things. But it's also an interview of, of mentally how smart, you know, how smart are you? How, how well do you know the game? So it's like two months of learning and preparing yourself for these questions that these professional coaches, general managers are going to be asking you. And you don't want to go in there and and sound like you don't know what you're talking about. Um, because, you know, you guys know like football, you know, there's this thing we call like football language, speak the language. You know, there's a difference between like, you know, I'm running outside zone versus I'm running to the right. You know, it just, it, 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 it speaks to your knowledge of the game. Um, but it's a tough process, you know, strict diet plan, you're working out, you know, two, three times a day. Um, for me, the way I got through it was like, I would just tell myself if I can lock in for two straight months and focus on this, like, I'm going to accomplish like this long time, long time dream that I've had. And I just had to lock in for two straight months, 60 days, yeah. just lock in on this one thing to reach my long time dream, which is, which is of course to make it to the NFL. Um, you know, so if you could just put everything aside for those two months and lock in, I think that's how you get through it. Um, and just keeping the main thing, the main goal in perspective. What was the strangest question a team asked you? Do you remember? Can you tell us? Uh, yeah, the, strange, the strangest question I ever got was, um, it was a uh, coach asked me, are you a cat or a dog? Come on. You're, you said you're a dog, right? No, I actually said Whoa. it depends on the type of cat. That's a good point because you could be a tiger, a lion. And cats are, yeah. you know, cats Panther. are savvy, they're smart. Panther. Pan Panther. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah, but you win that you one. Go. You win this round. You win this but round. See, Good call. That's a, <laughs> yeah, like, that was, the, that was definitely, you know, that's what you think about. It's like everybody's yeah. quick to say dog because you just think house cat. Yeah. There's a lot of, there's a lot of different cats, a lot of different cats. You know, Deion Sanders is in my head. That's the problem because, you know, he's putting Ds <laughs> on people's jerseys now. He's not putting yeah. Cs for cats. It's captain or no, dog. No, but no, no. And, and is dog is a – I think dog is a universal term in all the sports. You can yeah. be a dog in football. You can be a dog in basketball. You can be a dog in tennis. Like, dog has become a universal term yeah. that associates. What I think dog means now is just, like, like really, really good at the game or whatever mm -hmm. it is, sure. your craft. Yeah. It's funny. I'll, I'll just randomly think to myself sometimes or I'll look at my wife and say, I can't believe how smart cats are. We have an outdoor cat who lives next to me down here. They just live on their own. Like, I let my dog out for two seconds, and she's not making it more than two seconds. So, that yeah. is, you know, it's neither here nor there. But, yeah, that's that's yeah. very interesting. All right, I got one more question. I'll throw it over to, to JY. Uh, talk, talk about those pit connections a little bit. Obviously, you guys had some, some fun teams. I was there covering it. Jordan said uh, Jordan was as well. From Kenny Pickett to – Another quadri that, uh, you know, Henderson out there who's balling out. I yeah. enjoy watching him as well. Mm -hmm. um, tell me tell me about some of those guys. And, you know, are you still – do you still ever talk to Kenny? Do you, do you keep in touch with quadri? Yeah, uh, absolutely, man. Like, the, the, pit, the pit connection is, like, really serious. Um, I think, you know, the term being a proud pit man is something that if you go to pit – you know, you just have to go there and be around it to understand what it is. Um, it's it's more than just a college relationship. It's the relationships past college. So absolutely, I still speak to, you know, Kenny. I still speak to Quadri. You know, guys like Brian O'Neill, I still speak to, yeah. you know, James. Like when I came in, like it was like James Conner. I'm still James. real close to James. Um, and, you know, when you, when you spend every day with somebody, you know, 5 a.m. workouts, 
you know, class together, study hall together, you know, workouts. It's like, and you really bleed and you sweat and you grind with these, with these group of young men and you kind of come in as young men and then you, and then you elevate to like, you know, young, like grown men by the time you leave, you're 20, 21 years old. Um, you develop a special bond with them that goes beyond football and then we're going to life. And I think that's the special thing about um, going to Pittsburgh, particularly because it's something that you hear about. Um, and it's something that I heard about coming out of high school, you know, about the guys before me. And it's something that you're hearing about, you know, after me as well. Um, you know, pit guys always stick close together. Um, and that brotherhood is always, is always like, is always, you know, real close. Yeah. Prob Pittman. It's, I, I hear everyone like that we have on here. It, they, they always say the same thing. And so talk about, you know, you did talk about some of those memories, but any one specific, like in your whole career thus far that, you know, you could kind of pinpoint as that was like, you know, the best moment of the football career. I mean, we, we could throw it back to Pee Wee football if you want to, um, but I don't know if that was, you know, maybe getting drafted or, you know, something at Pitt. You know. uh, yeah. Um, I'll, I'll give you my, my best moment by far is, uh, as far as football is not on the field. There's 1,000% getting drafted um, mm -hmm. because I got to experience it. You know, I'm from a small city, Niagara Falls, New York. Yeah. And, um, you know, when you're just from New York State, period, football is not respected. Especially I'm in upstate New York. I went to high school in Buffalo, New York. Like everybody knows about the winters in Buffalo. The springs and the falls feel the same. Um, so um, growing up in this small city and not seeing a lot of guys go major division one or even go to the NFL. There's only been one guy from Niagara Falls that made it to the NFL other than myself, and that's James Starks. Went to the Green Bay Packers, played running back actually, went to the University of Buffalo, went to the Green Bay Packers, won a Super Bowl with Aaron Rodgers, um legendary player yeah so we know who they like, beat yeah <laughs> yeah i'm sorry i'm sorry yeah so i that, that, i was i was i was rooting for the uh, hometown hometown guy that, for sure, that year. For sure. um but you know that was like the first person to like for me to like see like this is actually obtainable like this is actually real um and for me to to be here in Niagara Falls with my mom and my dad and my entire family and friends watching me and get drafted, um, that was by far hands down the best memory um, that that I've had. Um, as far as football memory, I'll give you an on field one. Um, I feel like best on field one for me was uh, was definitely us beating Clemson in Clemson. Uh, I think they were number two in the country at the time. Um, but if you just look at the team they had, like the fact that we were able to like go into there and beat that team, a lot of people don't know, like it was their senior day, um, you know, things like that. Death like, Valley's no joke. Have, yeah. Yeah, like Death, Death Valley's, Valley's no a joke. Tough place to win. Yeah. And this is like this is, you know, this is Deshaun Watson and Mike Williams and you know, yeah. defense. You got Christian Wilkins and them like like Ben Bulware, a linebacker, like all of these like NFL players all around. And, you know, I was actually, cause my, our special teams coach is also our running backs coach. So I was actually on like PAT and field goal as like a wing. So I was on the field mm -hmm. when, when Chris Blewett made Blew the it. kick, made, when Blewett made the kick to win it. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that, that's a little funny thing for y'all. Like, Coach Andre Powell, the running backs coach, he wasn't running backs coach for University of Pittsburgh. He used to put his running backs at like wings on PAT and field goal. And he would say people wouldn't rush as hard. But I, I yeah, I, like if you know football, PAT and field goal is the worst like two second play in football. Yeah. It's like you got to stand there and just get ran over by like 300 pound dudes. Like it's not fun. Nobody wants to do it. Yeah, it, it sucks. But that was a cool experience to be on the field uh, when that when that play happened. I remember it like it was yesterday. That was a great game. Hey, before we get you out of here, I, I do have to ask.
So you're only 27 years old. What What's next for you? And, you know, you're still training, obviously. I take it in the gym. Are you just waiting for the next opportunity? Um, have you been in you know touch with the Steelers about possibly coming back? Or, you know, wh where are you at right now? Uh, right now, I'm just training and, and honestly just getting ready for whatever the next, next opportunity is. Um, I know for a fact I got a lot of football left in me. I know I can make an yeah. impact on 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 uh, one of the 32 teams in the league. So really, just staying in shape um, and, and staying ready for whenever my phone rings and, and ready for the next opportunity. Because um, because I, I got a lot of ball left in me, and I'm and I'm confident in that. Um, and I'll be ready. I'll be ready whenever the phone rings for sure. I uh, love Pittsburgh. You know, love love being there uh, this past year. You know, Coach Tomlin. Like I met Coach Tomlin, not to go off on a rant, but I met Coach Tomlin yeah. my first day attending the University of Pittsburgh as a recruit. I had this picture with him in the parking lot when I was like, what was I, seventeen? Yeah. And he took a picture with like me and my and my family, like my little brother and stuff. So to to see that come full circle five years later. Um, and just get a chance to just like learn from them and 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 put on a Steelers uniform. Um, it was it was it was something that I'll always cherish and and remember um, for forever. So definitely definitely blessed and thankful to have been there this past year. Um, and would love to be back. I love I love Pittsburgh. I love the Steelers. Um, you know I got a little bit of relationship with Arthur Smith because uh, he was in Atlanta for a little stint. I was there. So you know you never know. Um, you know, but, but anybody calls, I'll be, I'll be happy to, you know, sign anywhere and, and, and impact that team anywhere I can. How do you feel hey, about man. Arthur? Is he going to bring a lot to the Steelers offense? Yeah, I think, I think Art, I think Art, um, amazing motivator. Um, and, and with, honestly, with the running game they already had and, and people knows Art's, you know, Arthur's history, you know, in Tennessee and then going to Atlanta, like, you know, maybe the fact we didn't win a lot of games in Atlanta, but our running running game was always, always uh, really, really good. Um, so I think he's going to bring, you know, like I think Naj and Jalen are going to be even better than they already are. Um, yeah, he brings he brings that grit and that and that Pittsburgh type of type of energy to the city for sure. Well, I think our viewers will love that, especially, you know, coming from someone who played. But hey. We appreciate you coming on. We'll have to do it again. And we yeah. hope that you're in black and gold, but you know we'll be rooting for you wherever you go. And as always, how to pit, man. Thanks for your time. Stay man, healthy. Yeah, absolutely. Appreciate you guys, man. Like you said, hell to pit. Big fan of the show. Keep doing what you guys are doing. Um, I, lo I love what you guys are doing. Um, and, and I'm thankful for y'all letting me come on the show today. Thank you. Appreciate it. Anytime. Uh, He's a cat and a dog. Panther and a dog. Heard it. Heard it. Exactly. There you exactly. Go. Something to think go. about. Hey, so, hey somebody in the draft might year, they might get that question. I might, yeah. you know, you I might hear, hear, hear this interview and switch it up. I don't want to give the answers to the test, but you got to think out the outside the box sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Some people, you yeah. know. Oh, man. <laughs> love it. Love it. Great love it. Thanks, Bob. Uh, appreciate it. All right. Appreciate you, boys. Thank, Thank you, man. Y'all have a great one. Y'all have a great one. You know, I, I love that we were able to talk to him about Arthur Smith there at the end, uh, Jordan. Um, we touched on almost, so much. We touched on so much. And, you know, obviously you mentioned it. I think we haven't had a lot of Falcons yet who played under Arthur Smith talk about it from a Steelers perspective. So that was really one of the first times on record, I think, that not just on our show, but that any player has has done that, right? Because what Atlanta Falcons currently are going to talk from a Steelers standpoint yeah. about the Steelers offensive coordinator. So that is that's really good stuff. And you know, that did not seem like a politically correct, you know, speaking. It sounded like he genuinely yeah. likes Arthur Smith. He called him Marty, you know. Um, so it seems like to say that he only sees Naj and Jalen getting better. Man, that that speaks a lot. All right. Hey, and you heard it here on the one and only the sick podcast, Steeler Crazy. As always, thanks for hanging. We'll see you next time. And that's a wrap. Hope you don't miss us too much until next time.
Follow the Sick Podcast Steelers Crazy on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Google Play, and Apple Podcasts.